Welcome along to the eighth installment in our video tutorial series where we're learning how to create a space shooter game using Pi Game Zero. In the previous tutorials, we got as far as creating a pretty cool looking game. Got the scrolling background, a little spaceship that flies around with the arrow keys. We can shoot one with this spacebar, kill the opposition there, and earn ourselves 10 points with every kill. One thing that we haven't got going that we need to get fixed up in this video is the collision event with the enemy. If our spaceship hits the enemy at the moment, we just fly straight through it, which isn't what we want. We want the game to actually end if we have a collision. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on now. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is head to the top of your code here and just scroll down a little bit until you're just above the update function. Once you're just above the update function, the first thing I'm going to get you to add in there is a variable, a new one called game underscore state. So game state, and we're going to set it to equal one. Now the reason we're making this variable, um, in our game we're going to have two different states that the player can be in. Game state, when it equals one, means that the player is alive and they can play the game. If we change that to game state equaling two, that's a different state um, that means our game is over. Okay, and depending on whether our game state is equal to 1 or equal to 2, different events are going to be triggered or occurring throughout our code. Okay, so we're going to start our game with it set to 1, which means we can actually play the game. So I'm just going to put in a quick comment above that saying um, set the game state, and in brackets I'm just going to write 1 equals alive, 2 equals game over. Okay, so that's what our game state is, and I'm going to be using that variable a little bit more um, throughout the code very shortly. The other thing I want to set up very quickly here is the game over screen. Okay, so before I get the coding done, I just want to go to my images folder and show you this little game over picture here. Okay, that game over picture I want to appear in the middle of my game screen uh, when we have a collision with our enemy. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll just close this window off. Um, and coming in just beneath the game state section that, where we wrote the code, I want you to put in a comment, I guess, that says set up the game over screen. And we're going to create a variable here called game over. And that'll be equal to an actor, which is also called game underscore over. That was that picture I just showed you in the images folder. Okay, so that has now been assigned to this game over variable, and I just want to set up the X and Y coordinates for this game over picture. Um, so I'm just going to write in game over dot X. It's the X coordinate, and set it to 400. That's halfway along the width of our game screen. So our game screen is 800 pixels wide, so we'll set that to 400. And then we'll do this game over dot Y position. We'll set that to 300, which is halfway between the top and the bottom of the game screen. Okay, that's all we need to set up in that top section of our code. We're now going to work our way down into the update function here where the majority of our code is kept. And there's a few bits and bobs we're going to update in here. Now, one of them that I would like to start with is um, when we press the space bar button to shoot a bullet. So go down in your code until you see this line here that says if keyboard dot space and bullet delay equals zero. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of code into here. So at the moment, as soon as our game starts, our player can shoot just by pressing the space bar and the bullet will start flying out. But if our player is dead, so the game state will be equaling 2, then I don't want them to shoot. I only want them to shoot when the game state equals um, 1. Okay, so what we're going to do um, on this first line here, it says if keyboard dot space and bullet delay equals 0, we're going to go in after that 0 and write another AND condition. And we're going to write and game state equals equals one. So for our player to be able to shoot a bullet, three things need to occur. They need to press the space bar on their keyboard. That bullet delay timer needs to be on zero. And the game state needs to be set to one. If those three things are all true, then the player can start shooting a bullet. Okay, without that, then they can't shoot. So if that game state changes to 2, it means they're dead, they'll no longer be able to shoot in the game. Okay, so that's what that little section does. Moving down a little bit further now, we're going to look for the um, code that brings our enemies into the game. 
Okay, in particular, we are looking for the one that says this, add enemies to the enemies list at random times. And you can see an if statement there that is spawning enemies at the top of the screen. Okay, we only want those enemies to spawn into our game if the game state is equal to 1. Okay, that means the game is playable. If the game state is equal to 2, then I don't want to see those enemies. I don't need them to come onto the screen. They'll be distracting, so we'll leave them off. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do, above that current if statement that's there, we're going to put in another one. Same as what we wrote before. If the game state is equal, equal to 1, and put a colon. Now after that, you'll need to indent um, this next if statement. Okay, there's quite a bit going on in that one, so just highlight it all and press tab on your keyboard. And that will just nudge it across. Okay, so if the game state is equal to 1, and we're able to play the game, and then... We're going to start spawning enemies up the top of the screen there. Okay, if it wasn't equal to one, then we would not be spawning any enemies. Um, that's looking pretty good. So we're going to scroll down a little bit now, and we're going to go all the way down to where we see the draw function. We're going to go just above it. We need to come in one indent from the left-hand edge of the page there. So just press Tab once, and we're going to start putting in um, the main part of the code here now. So we're going to be looking at whether or not the player has collided with a enemy ship to start with. Um, if they have, then we're going to make it game over. Um, and we're going to also get an explosion animation to appear to replace our player. And we're also going to do a little bit with some sounds and music. Okay, so I might put in a comment first of all. Now the comment is simply going to say when the game is in play, end it. When the player collides with the enemy. Okay, easy as that. So let's go down and start coding this up. So like we've done oops, on the previous few lines, we're going to write in another if statement to find out if the game state is actually oops, equal, equal to 1. So if our game state is equal to 1, and that means we can play the game, we're going to do another check now to see if... Our plane has collided with any of the enemies on the screen. So we're going to do if player.collide list, and then we're going to look through that enemies list there of all the enemies on the screen, and we're going to say not equal to minus one. Okay, minus one means they haven't been hit, but if it's anything else, then it means they have been hit by the enemy. So that line of code there is basically saying, or is checking to see if the player has collided with an enemy on the screen. Okay, put a colon at the end, and on the next line, if they have collided with an enemy, we're going to change the game state variable first of all to equal to. Okay, just one equal sign there because we're setting a value, not testing a value. So we're testing a value here, we're setting a value here. That's why we only use one of those equal signs. We're going to set it to two. Okay, not only that, we're also going to clear the enemies from the screen. So I'm just going to write enemies dot clear. I'll put a comment in that just says clear the enemies from the game screen. All right, let's keep going here. The next thing we're going to do is put an explosion in. So where the player hit the enemy ship, we're going to turn that into an explosion animation. So I'll say when the, when the player dies, um, make an Explosion here. Okay, a few things we need to do here. We need to set up an explosion variable. And we're going to set that equal to actor and in quotation marks inside of some brackets there. We're just going to say explosion one. Okay, now if you look in your images folder, there's explosion one there. And in a moment we're going to animate it to have explosion one and two. Just like uh, which we did in a previous lesson. When we kill an enemy with our bullets, it's the same sort of explosion. Okay, so the explosion equals the actor and then explosion number one. And then we're going to set up the X and Y coordinates of this explosion. So explosion.x will equal player.x. It's going to go right on top of where the player got hit. And explosion dot y will be equal to player dot y. Okay, now we're going to work on the little animation itself. So remember, there's two pictures in our animation. So we're going to write in explosion dot images, 
equals, and then in square brackets, we've got a list of our explosion images. Oops. So explosion one is the first one. We put a comma, and then we got explosion two. Oops, and we're using square brackets around that because it is a list of animations that we're going to be accessing there. I'm going to write explosion dot fps okay, frames per second. We're going to set it to eight. I've set it in a previous video, but I'll get you to do it again. Um, just change the number eight when you're testing in a moment and just see what sort of effect it has on the animation, whether it's um, faster or slower. We're also going to put explosion dot life and we're going to set that equal to 10. Okay, now that, I'm not going to write the comment again, but it's the same as what we've got up here on this line. So it's going to store a countdown that will represent how long the explosion will be displayed on the screen. Okay, and the last little bit there, we're just going to write explosions dot append. So we're going to add something to the explosions list. And that is the explosion variable. Alrighty, uh, that's looking pretty good. Um, now, I'm not going to test it yet because we haven't drawn the explosion onto the screen. We might go and do that now before we sort out the sounds and the music. So go down to your draw function here. There's a few things we need to change. Um, the refreshing the screen and background are fine. It's when we get to drawing this player. I don't want to draw the player on the screen if the game state is equal to 2. We need that game state to equal 1 to see our player. So what I'm going to do is just a quick if statement here that just says if game state um, I'm going to put is equal to 1. If it is, then we're going to draw the player on the screen. So if the game state is equal to 1, we're able to play the game and the player gets drawn on the screen. If it's not equal to 1, then we don't draw the player. We don't get to see them. So we don't get to see that spaceship. Simple as that. Uh, now the next section about bullets, enemies and explosions is fine. Drawing the text on the screen there for the score is also fine. But underneath that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write if game state equals equals 2. So this is what's happening if we have died. Um, so if we have died in our game and our game state is equal to 2, then what we're going to do is write un uh, game over and then put dot draw bracket brackets. So that's going to draw that game over picture into the center of the screen. Not sure if this is going to work yet. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a uh, an error about one of the variables. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So local variable uh, game state is referenced before assignment. That's an easy one to fix. So remember at the top of our code, at the start of the session, we set up the game state here and set it equal to one. Now inside the update function, we try to set that value all over again uh, when we die. So if we have a collision with our enemy, we try to update that game state variable to equal two. But we're not allowed to do that in this update function unless we make it a global variable, which means we can update it inside the function. And we can also update it out here outside of the function. Okay, so where we've got um, the define update function where it says global bullet delay and the score there what we need to do is also write in a game state okay that's made it a global variable we should be able to test it out now okay, that's looking pretty good so far so we were able to run into the enemy and we're able to die and get the game over screen up there what i want to change now is just a little bit of the music um, so i'm going to go to the bottom of my update function quite a bit of code in there now so it's again above the draw function and we're going to tab ourselves across so we're underneath the explosions here because it's going to come in as part of this so when we collide with the enemy okay we're going to do a few things with our sounds we're going to do sounds.music.stop and stop it from playing that background music will stop completely we also want to sounds.shoot.stop we want to stop that shooting sound, because um, we're not going to be able to shoot bullets anymore, so that shooting sound needs to stop. And then we're going to play some sounds. So sounds dot collision dot play is the first one. So that's going to be the sound of an explosion when um, two planes collide or spaceships collide. 
and then at the bottom there we're going to play some different music so sounds dot quiet underscore music dot play and we want that um, to repeat forever so just put a minus one in the brackets at the end there after play okay now just to make you aware of these sounds if i go to the sounds folder up here again i'll make this a bit smaller okay you can see that we've got um a collision sound for when the ships collide We've also got quiet music here, which is the same kind of background music as what the game has, but on a much um, quieter and slower scale. All right, um, let's give that a bit of a test run and see how it's going. So I'll stop it and start it. Shoot, no worries. Let's get hit. There we go. So you hear that music is a lot slower game over sign appeared in the middle of the screen everything else has disappeared you can try and shoot and move around but nothing's happening so that is definitely game over alrighty so that's about all we need to do in this video I'm going to give you a few challenges if you're in my class um, for the next step so adding things like power-ups um, and we might even look to put a splash screen on at the start as well there so the game doesn't start straight away okay we can come back to it and restart the game once we die as well okay but they're just a few things i might challenge you to put into your game okay i'm going to save this video here i don't think we need to go any further um, and i will see you in a later tutorial